Welcome to Douglas Wilson's The Podcast. This audio is brought to you by Canon Press. Before we get started, I wanted to make sure you were aware of a few other Canon Press podcasts that you might enjoy. Douglas Wilson's blog, Blog and May Blog, is now on audio. Additionally, Nancy Wilson released a brand new podcast this summer called Femina, where she offers a weekly note of encouragement in basic Christian living habits and practices for women. Get these weekly encouragements wherever you get your podcasts. So, welcome to the podcast, episode 157. Podcast 157. So, in this um, crazy time of ours, one of the things that should be obvious to us as we look at it is that complacency is out. If you used to live in such a way where you thought, I can just specialize, I can just focus on my own dental practice or my own job at the hardware store or my own software, you know, I'm a software engineer and I can just focus on that. I can worry about getting my family to church on the weekend and devote myself to my profession and growing in my profession. And I can just trust the rest of the world to do their job. I can trust the police to do the job. I can trust the governor to do his job. I can trust the mayor to do his job. I can trust the evangelical leaders speaking at big conferences to do their job. I can expect everything to stay put. And I don't have to think about that stuff. All I have to do is go to church, be told to have the sermon tell me to be good, don't cheat, and then I can go back to my work and life is simple, right? Life is good. Well, what's happened in the last six months is many tens of thousands of Christians who were never taught to swim have been pitched headlong into the deep end. And all of a sudden, you've got to think, okay, before before I could just go to the store and buy a carton of milk. And now there's a masking order in place, and I have to know what I think about Romans 13. I have to know what I think about the limits of political authority. I have to know what I think about civil resistance. Some of my Christian friends are going in this direction. Some of my Christian friends are going in that direction. It used to be that everybody outside my profession was doing their job, or I thought they were doing their job, and things stayed put day to day in a normal enough way where I thought, okay, I can just count on that and not pay attention to it. Well, that's not true anymore. It's simply not true. Uh, One of the uh, things that's good about playing baseball, playing softball, or a game like that, is that you have to be thinking all the time. Let's say you're playing third base, and there's a guy on second. Let's say the count is three and two. You have to be thinking, okay, if the ball goes to right field, I'm going to do this. If the ball comes to me, I'm going to throw here. You're running scenarios all the time. And then every batter, the scenario is slightly different, and you have to go through it again. Well, there have been a lot of Christians who've not been running those scenarios at all. They've Nobody said, suppose the governor shut our state down. Suppose the governor said everybody's got to stay home. Or suppose the governor said you can go out, but you have to go out with a mask. What do I do? And how do I learn? Where do I look these things up? Where do I go to figure this out? So the year 2020 has been a real wake-up call. Now, if and it's been a wake-up call, even if it suddenly improves in September, or as I suspect, it's going to improve, start to improve greatly October, uh, November 4th, as soon as the election's over. But let's say it does, or whether or not it does, if it does, the year thus far has been a wake-up call. A lot of Christians have to stop being complacent. They can't just read devotional literature and whatever it takes to learn their craft or their vocation better. You are a churchman. You are a father. You are a mother. You're a son or a daughter. You are a carpenter. You are a citizen. You are you, you have a number of roles to play, and you have responsibilities in those roles. And you don't want to be the lifeguard who never learned to swim. You are in this position. Um, well, I'll just say it again. Complacency is out. 
So the next word in our study of hamartiology for episode 157 is baskaino. Baskaino. B-A-S-K-A-I-N-O. Baskaino. And it's the verb that means to bewitch. To bewitch. There's only one instance of this word being used in Scripture, and that's found in Galatians 3.1. Paul says there, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth? before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. So there's the first part. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you. There it is. Now, in this instance, the literal meaning would obviously be the sin of witchcraft, when you cast a spell on someone or do, you know, engage in some sort of necromancy. If you cast a spell, that would be bad. That's that's the sin of witchcraft. But Paul is using the word metaphorically here. Uh, the problem in Galatia was one of false teaching, where the, the false teachers were urging circumcision as a spiritual necessity, but apparently the effectiveness of the false teaching was such that Paul could plausibly say that it seems like some sort of magic was involved in it. And this is how the metaphorical uh, use works. If we say that a guy, let's say um, an older gentleman who's been widowed for 10 years, inexplicably falls in love with a younger woman and uh, he's acting crazy, not acting his age, not being responsible at all. And let's say that the, uh, the young woman is after his money, and someone says, well, I think it's her eyes. Her eyes are bewitching. Now, when you say her eyes are bewitching or her manner is bewitching or her attractive, is, you're not saying that she's literally casting spells. It's, it's a metaphorical use. But what you're doing is you're saying that what would normally be Uh, accomplished by means of magic is apparently being done by uh, other means. So, the effectiveness of the false teaching in Galatia was such that Paul could plausibly say that it seemed like some sort of magic was involved in it. When someone does something wrong, but is acting like they were hypnotized or they're under some kind of spell, it's appropriate to call it out, as the apostle does here. It's interesting, also, that there's a second reference to witchcraft in Galatians. Galatians is is a short little book, but it mentions witchcraft in two places. And although it's a different word, uh, the word there is pharmakia, and it's listed among the works of the flesh in chapter 5. So when Paul says the works of the flesh are plain, one of the sins that he lists there is the sin of pharmakia. Actually, our word pharmacy comes from it, uh, because witchcraft, the occult, back then was closely related to drug activity. So drug-related occult activity is what pharmakia would be uh, referring to. And there, the reference is to actual witchcraft. Here in Galatians 3.1, he's um, using the word figuratively. So, podcast episode 157. Uh, the book I'd like to review is Vindicii Contra Tyrannos, um, Latin title of Vindication Against Tyrants, Vindicii Contra Tyrannos. It was written in the 16th century, 1500s, by a Huguenot and under the, the pseudonym of Junius Brutus. There are d- different speculations as to who might have been the author. One speculation is a gent named Dumornay, but he was a Huguenot writing in the 16th century, and he was laying out the case for Christian resistance. He's laying out the case for Christian resistance up to and including the force of arms. When is it appropriate to resist the civil authority? Now, I said earlier that um, in the podcast that complacency is out. One of the things that we need desperately to recover, we need to, we need to re-enroll in American civics class, a biblical civics class first, and then American civics second, so we know our rights and responsibilities, we know what we're allowed to do, what we're not allowed to do, where we're allowed to go, and, and so on. Now, I'm happy to say that Canon Press, I'm in the Canon Press recording booth right now doing this, immediately behind me is the Canon Press warehouse. Canon Press has just released a new edition of this book. I'm talking about Vindicii Contra Tyrannus. What Junius Brutus does is he he is steeped in Scripture. This is not uh, the kind of book where he 
argues that the king hurt my feelings. And because the king hurt my feelings, I, w- I want to uh, run, go get my gun. This is a thorough and exhaustive treatment of a scriptural political theory of resistance. When is it appropriate? When is it not appropriate? And he goes through, he uses the entire scripture. It's a, it's a uh, wonderful book that way. If you took to heart what I said earlier in this podcast about com- complacency being out, you really need to get a copy of this book. It's accessible. It's straightforward. It's, uh, the arguments are plain and convicting. We have to understand that the American experiment that declared independence from Great Britain was heavily dependent on this tradition. Another book that Canon Press is going to be releasing that I've written the introduction to along the same lines is Samuel Rutherford's Lex Rex. So this Huguenot writer in the 1500s in France and Rutherford, a Scottish writer in the 1600s in Scotland, laid down the biblical basis for resistance to tyrannical authority. That case, in fact, this particular book, Vindicii Contra Tyrannus, had a major influence on John Locke, the English philosopher, who was less explicitly Christian. Although, well, he was a, he was a Christian, but not Reformed the same way uh, Rutherford and uh, the Huguenots would have been. But he was explicitly Christian, and his theory was hugely influential uh, with the founding fathers in the founding of our republic. And Vindicii, the book itself, was well known in the colonies. So these biblical writers informed and shaped the thought of the people who won our independence from Great Britain. And uh, because we are now dealing with uh, tyrannical overreach on a major scale, we really need to um, go back to school. We need to brush up on these things. We need to read up on them. If you want to read on that, I'd read uh, Francis Schaeffer, Christian Manifesto. I'd get a copy of this book, Vindicii, and then Lex Rex uh, when Canon Press releases that. Mm-hmm. 